Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. Oh, it's going. It's recording. Slide. There We're we going go. Now. Yay. All right, all right, all right. And now I need a beer. <laughs> Cheers, right. gentlemen. Selection section 13, only, what, two years in the making? Hey, like the Sistine Chapel, we were on our backs for a while there, guys. <laughs> Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and uh, it's that time again. Uh, time we've waited a long time for. A new selection section episode. <laughs> and Yay! Oh boy. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> <laughs> we only promised this months ago, right? It has been a while since our yeah, last one. <laughs> we we actually promised selection section sometime around last year's Thanksgiving, and uh, it's almost Thanksgiving again. <laughs> like it's like only a month and a half away. <laughs> So yeah. we didn't specify which Thanksgiving <laughs> we did. Oh, actually, it is almost Canadian Thanksgiving. So to our Canada friends, you're welcome. Well, we didn't pro- we didn't have an episode last year, so we didn't promise anything. Oh, we're talking maybe, like maybe I yeah. got my timeline all wrong. Yeah, it's been a minute because like we didn't have an episode all 2022. December 2021 was the last episode we released. And then the first episode we had was what, March of this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cocaine bear one, right? Mm-hmm. It's been yeah, it's been a minute, podcast <laughs> listeners. Been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got. We we need to confirm this, guys. Are we gonna start season three with this episode, or do we start that with Cocaine Bear? I think this should be proper season start. I think those were like what like Star Trek does with the short treks episodes, like the little web episodes to get people excited for Star Trek, and then boom, new season. And but those episodes don't actually count. Like yeah, that's yeah. what this should be. The, the the cocaine bear and the flash should be like our teaser kind of episodes, like our little appetizers, little hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this this is the brisket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This is the main mm. Cause yeah. I would like to, if possible, Tom, you're gonna have fun editing this episode. Have another episode or two out before the end of the year that's not a journey episode. Spoiler alert, we didn't. Okay, so anywho. So, who boy, it has been a while. How about that Ghostbusters Afterlife, huh? Yeah? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, right. It was awful. Yeah, fuck that film, really. Yeah. That movie broke us. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, we needed therapy for two years. Yeah. (laughs) That movie broke us. Yeah. Let's hope we don't encounter another movie that needs to give us another two years off. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, let me time stamp this uh, part. 2134, Josh curses us. <laughs> we have the first episode of this journey out. The second episode will come out in 2027. <laughs> so, um, anywho, we slaved over fires and we forged this new path for us with blood, sweat, tears, and lots and lots of booze. Seriously, so much booze, but no white claws. But we're very excited to be back with this new format, this new journey style. But first, rules. Then we'll welcome back. So to set the stage, I shall transfer the spotlight to Thompson. Tom, it is yours. Whoosh. Smash cut. Tom, center stage. Three-piece suit. Fantastic as always. Thank you, Reginald. Thompson here. <laughs> my you bad. thought I was going to read that in the script. <laughs> my bad. That's, that's, that's my bad. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. Here, hold on. It's very oh, easy, man. Very I just to took a drink too, and then I was reading that. I'm like, wait, I'm not Nigel. <laughs> it's been a minute, guys. Okay, give me a break here. So much fun editing this episode. <laughs> oh, I'm keeping this in. All right. Thank you, Reginald Thompson here, American name Tom. And as said before, welcome back! It's been a minute since we've had a selection section episode, but it feels like it's been a long road getting from there to here. Read the script, please. (laughs) 
Tom's not allowed to go off script. <laughs> <laughs> Any hoot, things are a little different now. Better, worse, we'll let you decide. We're doing four episode journeys instead of six, which is going to be something of a treat to your editor here. And also, we will be releasing one episode a month instead of once a week, which it was like Santa finally got my Christmas list and he gave me exactly what I want. Two years too late. Hey, Santa runs on Santa time. <laughs> also, the six degrees format, it's gone. Fuck that shit. I didn't so we... insult the audience in the original script, please. Do that's not... all Tom. Yeah, I see Josh Tom. adding to this in here. It's, it's right in front Tom. of me. Honestly, though, we did love the Six Degrees format, but it did restrict us just a little bit on the movies we could select and the movies we could circle back to. So we're going to try something that gives us not just a little more freedom, but a little more flavor. But I may be getting a bit ahead of myself. So to reveal a little bit more about what can expect coming forward in our fire pit and our latest destination... I whip pan the camera to Nigel. Thank you, Thompson. Nigel here, American named Dan, and I too will welcome our audience back. Uh, now, we've been drinking. I mean, thinking. Drinking. <laughs> Mostly. That's the other one, guys. Mostly drink. uh, drinking. Yeah, he meant drinking. I, I did. I did. That was not a typo. That was intentional. Uh, over this new form, we've been we've been going over it for the months and months, and we honestly Years. couldn't be... Yes, we couldn't be more. Time moves differently at the Fire Pit Podcast, and we couldn't be more excited. We do hope you'll enjoy it. Um, now for the reveal of our next destination film. Drum roll, please, gentlemen. <laughs> our next destination is Masters of the Universe. Yes, the cinematic masterpiece, The Tour de Force, starring Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langella, the principal from Back to the Future, Tom Paris from Star Trek Voyager, and Courtney Cox, one of the people from Friends herself. Awesome. Wait, you told me we'd be watching a masterpiece film. I th Masters of this, the... We just um, needed you to sign off on the film, Tom. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It also has like a troll-like dude in it. It's going to be the best. Why are we doing this movie, you ask? Because we want to. Also, it's awful. So, <laughs> but, but, but it is the best kind of awful. It's so bad, it becomes great. Like, it's just full of cheesy, nostalgic goodness that it, uh, it turns around and it becomes like, wow, I can't believe this is amazing. Like, I, I don't know why this wasn't a bigger hit. But when we watch the movie, we'll all discuss why it wasn't a bigger hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that being said, we are still on a journey. We're not just going to watch the movie. We got to get to the movie first. We're just going to have a slightly different format going forward. So we're going to try to revolve around a theme to get to this movie. Yeah, it pretty much guarantees that Tom and Dan can no longer veto when I want to do The Phantom Menace. I mean, it does have the added benefit of no longer being the worst Star Wars movie. I'm still calling veto, though. You can't veto. You know what? You're right, Josh. I'm not going to veto. Just going to edit it out. I can edit now too, Tom. I have that power as well. <laughs> oh, oh, for fuck's sake. <gasps> he said the thing! My God! He said the, the thing! thing. God, God, he said the thing! I, I said the thing! <laughs> yeah, yeah well, let's select like the, the movie, movie guys. guys. <laughs> We're back, baby! For the third time this year. <laughs> Almost like we never left. <laughs> Except that time we left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anywho. Well, well let's, let's go ahead and explain the new format. Magical number 13. So, we're no longer doing lists. We're not doing the six degrees anymore. Now we're going to be picking individual films instead of journeys. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have three journeys per season. But each of us get to pick a film leading up to the destination film. That's why it's only four episodes. But since we're not going to be doing six degrees of, we're going to be just kind of having categories. But ultimately, in the end, I get to pick my movie 
and it's obviously going to be the Phantom Menace. So, <laughs> and I'm vetoing that real hard right away. And he can't. That's the beautiful thing about this format is he has to watch it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, but, fuck. Now, but but Tom, that also means we have to watch one of your like artsy fartsy, possibly in a foreign language, most definitely in black and white kind of movie. You know what I mean? Ooh. It's going to be Brian's song. We know it's going to be Brian's song. Yeah. It's think of it like the Patriot Act. Whatever political party you happen to agree with, it's the best thing ever. But if you're, but if your party, if your party's not in power, then it's government overreach. So yes, it sucks. We're gonna have to watch the Phantom Menace at some point in time. But we get to pick what we want to watch and make Josh watch it. So <laughs> you make me watch an Israeli film in subtitles. I don't think it can get much worse than that. So <laughs> I may have another thing that night. <laughs> that was still the best text message you ever gave me, Josh. <laughs> I'm no, no longer allowed to pick movies. <laughs> no, the, one, the, the one where you're like, I'm currently in a theater watching an Israeli movie with subtitles. I kind of understand why you had a thing and you put thing in parentheses. <laughs> hey, there was nudity, though. Full frontal nudity. male nudity. <laughs> I'm not kidding, audience. <laughs> Anyways... Mm-hmm. Also, to add to um, Josh's explanation here, much like our previous film, we are keeping some of the rules. The same film cannot appear twice, nor can we use movies we've already done. So we're going to Masters of the Universe for this film, but we can't have like, oh, well, this has Dolph Lundgren and he was in a film with Sylvester Stallone. So we're going to watch Rocky again. We can't do that. No, no, no. It's got to be new movies in the selection not picking a same movie i think that would be more of a soft rule okay because like if i wanted to watch rocky you know it's like we're watching rocky (laughs) but it's kind of like one of those things where it's like it's a soft rule that we're not gonna retread old movies yeah I, i still like there's literally there's so many different movies out there yeah literally hundreds and also like I mean, there's plenty of other Rocky movies to get to. We don't have to watch the same one twice. Yeah, we've got to do Rocky Five next, just just for Dan. I've, I'm not. I'm going to have something. Why to do is that he day. broke? I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he knocked out the Russian champ in Russia in the height of the Cold War. I mean, how is he broke? <laughs> yeah, so we don't need to be retreading old movies. If we've seen it, we've seen it. But at the same time. It would be fun to rewatch like early episodes. Like I just rewatched Doom for the first time since we watched it. It would be kind of interesting to rewatch that again. <laughs> I mean, I hope it doesn't come on one of your lists, Josh, but uh, it, I see what but, you're saying. But yeah, it's like we get final say in our episode of that journey. So if I want to watch The Phantom Menace for the next three journeys, we, we, we're watching The Phantom Menace. Absolutely, <laughs> Vito. I will break all the rules to do okay, that. So, so just instantiating this rule then. We cannot pick a movie we have already watched. Do we want to make that a hard rule then? Yes. Yes. Let's uh, make that a hard rule. Because yeah, not just, only I just like the challenge of picking something new to watch. Oh, That's all. Don't get me wrong too. It's just one of those things though. Let's just lay the rule down. This way it's there. Uh, that we have not recorded on this podcast. Because yeah. there are movies I've seen in real life that I would love to show you guys. Oh yeah. It, an, a movie that has not been on this podcast cannot mm-hmm. be picked in your lists. I like that rule. Yeah, I like that. So that is now officially a hard rule. Hard rule. Hard rule. It is rock hard. I'm rock hard. (laughs) Dan, say the line. Gross. I think Dan, say the line is a new new catchphrase. (laughs) It might be. Anyways... Also, um, I think we did mention, too, like, each journey will also have their own soft rules. Challenges, if you will. To kind of not only keep us on target, but make things interesting. So, correct me if I'm wrong, and I might be overstepping my bounds, guys. But for this one, we had at least three soft rules. So, I think one of those was, for this journey, since we have masters of the universe as our destination and it's he-man uh one of the um challenge categories were the movies we pick have to be and again these are soft rules challenges uh based on existing ips so like based on toy lines and uh or cartoon series 
Yeah, you're getting into the uh, category section. Like we pick the movies into those. I wouldn't call those necessarily rules. So we're not talk. They're not soft rules, but categories. We're saying yeah, here. They're, so. those are just categories that we pick. Because remember, we have the third category was basically whatever we want. That's the beauty of this format. Because I remember when me and Dan got together like a year ago and just kind of discussing the ideas we was having for the podcast. Mm-hmm. It's like the idea behind this one is like. Like I said, I didn't, I'm not coming into tonight with a movie that I'm going to pick. Mm-hmm. Like I have my lists of movies that I think would be fun to watch on this podcast, but I don't have a dead set one that I am going to pick because I'm going to bounce my ideas off you. And then we may come up with an entirely different theme than these three categories that we came up with. Mm-hmm. Right. You never know. We could have a completely different theme and like, cause nothing is set in stone. Not like it was with our last one. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. And, and I, I picked some of my movies and I picked them based on like, you know, I think the first category was like, what were they doing or what were they thinking? But I, now I just kind of want to change that to what? <laughs> That's Tom's catchphrase, like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And then I've got some movies based on toy lines that I'm, I'm, I'm going to banter about. And then the other third category was open. And I'm like, well, uh, maybe we can make something fit. For me, I challenged myself because we were talking about it, you know, still trying to find a way to we could either six degrees the movie we pick to our destination and or six degrees it to a movie we've already watched. And surprisingly enough, it wasn't that hard to do, especially for the movies I have on my list here. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a stretch, but nope. So I don't know. It could be terrible. We'll find out. So I'm the one that picked the destination. So one of you two has to go first, pick your, like bring out your first movie. Like which, what's the first one you're going to present? Also, how many are we presenting a piece? Well, I've got a lot of movies on my <laughs> list, but I picked the top like <laughs> five. I think when we originally talked about it, we was just going to present three each yeah. and then kind of go from there because there may be some overlap. Yeah. I, yeah. I have four that I like. I, I picked like, I, I have like, 13 or 14 written down, but I only have like four of them going to present. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Well, I, cause I didn't know which ones I wanted to do. So I like, I wrote down all the ones I'm like, okay, this sounds good. This sounds good. This sounds good. And then I just started whittling it down. Like, okay, uh, no, they can save that one for later. Uh, Maybe not. No, that's stupid. (laughs) You know? See, I'm just, I think the rules are so loose that it's like, even if I mention every single movie on my list, we're just putting it out there. Like, yeah. You know, like I, I have, I'm not restricting myself on how many we say, like we may go around round Robin, like what are your top three movies for this one? And then we can be like, Oh, these are the other movies on my list too. So or it's like they're backup movies. Like if I have a movie that Josh and or Dan has like, Oh shit, that's off the list. Well, um, here's this movie instead. Well, yeah. let's present the three or four that we each have. And then if, if you're feeling meh about any of your picks, or you feel like any of your picks don't mesh with something else, then we can bring out the other yeah. ones out of the So I said, of, it's keep it deck. open. I mean, yeah. like I said, we're, yeah. the whole point is to be fluid. We didn't want to have any anxiety about picking our movies or whatnot. So yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, yeah. Just, let's keep it fluid. Who brings, one, whoever brings who, what brings what? Yes. Yeah. Well, who is going first? Tom, do you want to flip a coin to see who goes first? Um, I don't have any in front of me, so I'm I trusting I got you, Josh. I got a coin. I got a quarter right here. Okay, well, Dan gets to call it. Since this is his movie, he gets to flip the coin. New rule established. If you pick New the movie, rule established. You, yes. If you pick the mo- the destination film, you flip the coin to see who goes first. Listeners, you're part of history. You're part of the process here. So you flip it, and then whoever gets this one is the second movie in the journey. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, so, so, yeah, so heads. What did, what did I say now? Heads, Tom. Heads tails, is me. Heads is Josh. Tails is Tom. All right, here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Josh, you are going second. Woohoo! <laughs> so I got the second movie in the journey, which means I, I'm going to go first. Or No, let's just go in, in re- release order. Dan will present his first, then I'll be second, and then Tom will be last. I like this plan. All right, fine. Okay, so we're doing Masters of the Universe. It's a movie uh, based on an IP that um, kind of has a sordid history of the budget constantly being cut. And um, you're the studio was like, you're wondering, like, why are you basing your you got a movie based on one of a really hot property, although the popularity of Masters of the Universe was waning at the time. It's a really hot property. And yet you're constantly pulling the rug out from underneath the Masters of uh, Masters of the Universe. And you're doing all these things that don't make any sense. Why would you do that? And because of that, my first movie that I'm going to present is the 1990 Captain America film. <laughs> Oh my god! 
So oh. man, I love this because right before you got on, I straight up told Tom, I'm like, Tom, I'm sorry, but I cut the Captain America film because I didn't do any superhero <laughs> movies. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> So that was that was the first one that actually popped into my mind because it actually has kind of a similar story. It does to Masters yeah. of the Universe. It now at the time that it, it's kind of hard to imagine. Uh, you know, if we have any like younger fans out there that are used to the MCU and the popularity of Marvel now, like in 1990, yeah, Captain America was like a B-list superhero. Like he was mm-hmm. just, you know, mostly known for being a member of the Avengers, and that was about it. But still, he's a Marvel. It's a Marvel movie. It's a superhero movie. It was made only one year after 1989's Batman, which was a huge hit. Yet this movie went like direct to video. The costume looks like shit. The rubber ears on the mask. The shield that definitely looks like it came out of Toys R Us. It's it's a perfect fucking storm of a bad movie. So like this was the first one that came to mind was the 1990 Captain America. I haven't decided if we're going to do it yet, but that one's out there. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. But judging by your guys' reaction, we almost have to now. <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, I come out of the gate with one that's just like, no, that's it. You don't, well, fuck the rest of this list. So <laughs> screw it. I'm just going to No, if this is else. your starter, man, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very worried to see the next two films you've got. Well, honestly, um, I approached it the same way I approached my, um, I used to approach my list. I always put my strongest list out first. So. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe the other two will be more palatable. We'll find out. Well, that was a good first one, Tom or Dan. What's okay, your? Uh... Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna type in the uh, doc the movies that have been chosen or movie movies presented. I should say not chosen yet. Movies presented. Yeah, I think we should go down the line. So Dan's introduced his first. So I think Josh, you should go. Your so we want to do it one. Okay, that works. Yeah, one at a uh, time. That way the okay. audience can like yeah. really just like. Ooh, okay, so what's next? okay, movies presented. Number one. So we're still Captain on the, the, the what were they thinking or what category, right? Yeah, yeah. So movies presented, Captain America, 1990, Dan, number one. So my first movie is uh, The Phantom Menace. I'm kidding. <laughs> Veto. <laughs> no, <laughs> you'll probably appreciate it after I say it. Now, my first movie is also a Marvel uh, movie. 1986 is Howard the Duck. <laughs> Fuck the both not one after the oh no no it's uh, hey, it's actually, it's also it's also like a couple of degrees from uh uh masters of the universe because howard the ducks got leah thompson who is also marty mcfly's mom and the principal from back to the future is in the uh yeah, see? Masters of the universe so <laughs> Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh, God. I have not seen that movie for 20 years, and it's probably for a very good reason. Oh, I remember loving that movie as a kid. I don't want to watch it as an adult, but I had to. <laughs> now, now, Josh, what is your, like, I gave reasonings why I was picked, why I presented Captain America in 1990. What is your, like, reasoning behind Howard the Duck? Like, why, other than to make us suffer, like, what is, like, the reason behind this because the movies just like it was one of those ones that just was a lot of turmoil in the whole development like i don't know the whole story behind it but i know it ended up coming out like it's a really bad movie so i'm just thinking like i know masters of the universe granted it's been probably 20 or 30 years since i've seen that one but i know the story behind that one i know it's not that great of a movie it's called Dolph lundgren in the 80s which you know let's be honest outside of rocky a lot of his shit is just b movie stuff but mm-hmm. I was just thinking, it's like, you know, this is a Marvel comic and it's like Howard the Duck is in the MCU now, but this movie was just bad. Yeah. And everything about it is just like, you look at it and you're like, why did they release this? Yeah. Okay. It's just I, like, okay. What, I, I, what were they thinking? Right. <laughs> yeah. no, that's a big, what yeah. were they thinking there? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. That's a Lucas one too, right? He produced it or something. It's um, it's, wow, what a choice! Holy shit! Yeah, well, both <laughs> of you right out of the gate. Holy God! I know we were like talking. Maybe we should make these like bad filmies. Yuck, 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 guys, <laughs> guys. Well, the category is what were they thinking? Of course, oh, we gotta watch these. Book <laughs> it. Oh, all right, so is it my turn now? It's your turn, Tom. How are you going to bookend this uh, journey before the destination? Well, okay. 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 
Uh, so I'm still going to start with my first one here because y'all are bringing some, um, just some gems. So my first film, Nigel, you were talking about Masters of the Universe, not exactly striking while the iron was hot mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, the zeitgeist. Well, the, you know, the like, movie was released at about the tail end of the movie or the popularity of the, to- of the toy line. Like it was, it was not released during the height of the toy line's popularity. Right, right, right. And in so fact, by the time my, the movie had been released, the cartoon had already been canceled. Yeah. And so for my first film on this list, it also kind of follows that theme of like, it didn't quite hit the zeitgeist when it was in the zeitgeist, but definitely an IP property. Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh my God. That's the new, that's oh, the one that shit. came out that this just, year. That just came out. Has, that just came out. It hasn't even come out yet. It's not coming out till October. But it's also like, since I'm technically number three with our recording schedule, we might get to watch it if we choose it. But again, it's one of those films. It's a hot property. It's for those in the future who have never heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, um, in 2014, it's a kind of a small indie Steam video game where you're just like a guy who's in a Chuck E. Cheese at night and you're a security guard. You watch the videos, but the animatronics come alive. And if you're not careful, they will kill you. And for some reason, it just clicked. And now, almost 10 years later, they've had like, what, 10 games now? There's a shit ton of them. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of games. Yeah, it's definitely, like it's, it's definitely moved beyond being a small indie uh, mm-hmm. game. It became kind of a cult hit. And then the second, yeah, yeah, because my daughter was like huge into Five Nights at Freddy's when she was like younger, which was weird because it like it made me feel like a bad parent. Because like my, <laughs> my, my seven or eight year old daughter like loves Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm like, you know, the concept is like a Chuck E. Cheese where the animatronics are trying to kill you and then stuff your body into one of the animatronics. <laughs> Dan, what are you doing as a parent? <laughs> oh, I even I even have my notes here where I have like if I wanted to go more into details, like describing like, hey, yeah, animatronics will like think, oh, you're a robot now in your suit. We're just going to stuff you in and murder you. You know, fun for all ages. Yeah, they even have like plushies that you can buy at, like GameStop and Target and all that for like Five Nights at Freddy's. Fun for all ages. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> But, I mean, it's been 10 years, so it's not quite zeitgeist. So, much like Masters of the Universe, it's kind of maybe getting a little rusty. And also, looking into, like, the people that made it and uh, all the, just the production. We don't know it yet, because it hasn't come out. But it could be a film we look back on, like Masters of the Universe, and go, How did you guys Fuck this up so bad. So that's my first choice. Maybe not my personal favorite choice, but one to consider. Wow. All right. That's interesting. Like oh, it. also, one thing that we didn't mention is that, that uh, this new format brings up is it allows for animated films. That's right. Yes. Yes, it, it does. does. It does. Yes. The only the only criteria is it has to be a feature length film. So it can't be like a it can't be a short film and it can't be a like a made for TV movie or something like that or a TV miniseries. But it has to be like a, a feature length film. So, yeah, it works for me. Yes. Which which could. Oh, my God. The emoji film. Oh, my God. We did open the door for the emoji film, guys. Well, no, because you, you, you mentioned Five Nights at Freddy's and it coming out at the tail end of its popularity. My mind went to the Angry Birds movie. <laughs> oh, my God. That, yeah. Oh my shit. That came out like two years after the fad had come and gone. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just thinking, it's like, dude, like I thought you were about to present the Angry Birds movie. And then you said Five Nights at Freddy's. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm not. I don't. We're friends, guys. We 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 we're. F- I have to see you in person sometime. I'm not. I don't want to get punched when I see you guys, so I'm not going to do that. I recommended Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> he did. We 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 long for the days where he recommended Phantom Menace. <laughs> awesome. So that was our first go about. So now I guess we're looping back up to you, Dan. All right, so uh, the second movie I'm going to present, um, it kind of is an open category, or it could also be in the what were they thinking or the simple what category. Um, also, it's kind of a movie that's based on an IP, but only vaguely resembles the IP that it's uh, based on. And um, it is 
1988's The Punisher. Ooh, Nigel. I'm waiting that Ooh. off one of my lists. Yeah, it's the <sighs> yeah, it's the it's the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. So we yep, actually get yep. two. We get we. So if I'm going first and I pick the destination, we're bookending with the Dolph. But um, I, I thought it was an interesting choice. I honestly haven't seen the movie in a very long time, so kind of interested to see it again. A little more interested to watch that than I am 1990 Captain America, um, mm-hmm. because at least this one's got gunfights and explosions and all that stuff. Right, right. Also, the uh, 1988 Punisher uh, is. Um, kind of sort of the uh reason Dolph Lundgren got cast in uh do you guys remember the uh we did before we did the podcast but we watched Showdown in Little Tokyo yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. The, it was episode of, zero right yep mm-hmm. yeah so it kind of will uh it, it kind of allows us to come a little full circle yeah 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 tangential and also with a lot of the recent Marvel films this phase whatever it's on and just the uh, everything they've been putting out it's I, I remember everyone hating on this film so if it does get picked it would be interesting to go back to a film that was so lambasted as like one of the worst superhero marvel films ever made and going back like eh, at least it's not yeah. she hulk both, both the two uh, like i was i almost didn't go with them because i was like i i am actually suffering from severe cape fatigue right now like i legitimately do not care about any superhero films that are currently either out in theaters now or scheduled to come out in theaters depending on when this episode is uh, aired i don't care i i just don't want to watch them um i only got through the flash because we wanted to do it for this podcast um it's kind of uh, both captain american punisher to me have some like interesting conversations because you know it's really hard to imagine now a world in which marvel really sucked at the theaters Dude, like yeah like yeah, yeah, say yeah. what you want like i have criticisms of the current marvel movies at least everything after endgame but like these movies were like they're still financially successful but the ones in the 90s and the late 80s were like marvel just could not buy a box office success until blade it's really yeah. hard to imagine that before blade they just could not get anything in the movies theater going but anyways my second film 1988 the punisher um that is what i'm going with as my um second film so a solid second nigel very solid second well um we're still on the what were they thinking right we're just gonna do kind three from each of these kind of you tell me the category you want this movie to be in we'll make it fit don't worry yeah well yeah. it kind of fits in that one although dan thank you because now i had to shorten one of my lists <laughs> What less we don't have to deal with. <laughs> what did you do? Did you have Punisher too? I, I did have the Punisher on one of my lists. Yeah, but that's fine. That's why I picked like a shit ton of them. All right. So for my second movie, oh, which one do I want to go with? Not uh, that one. Oh, uh, you know what? One. You know what? No, oh, I got no. it. I have one. I don't. Even, I didn't think I was going to present this one, but because Nigel presented the Punisher, I'm going to keep in theme. I'm noticing a trend since Nigel's the first one. He kind of sets the precedence. Like this can be like we're we're kind of picking our own lists. Where you know it's we're forging our lists. So it's like I want to keep up with the theme that Nigel is presenting, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he's presenting the Punisher. Yes. I am going to present 1995's Judge Dread. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm 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 down with it. Also, we get a, we get another uh, Stallone film, and yep. you know, even bad Stallone films are somehow good comedy. And it's another comic book that the adaptation people are like, "What? Oh my god! It, <laughs> it is! It is! Oh, and it caused such an uproar back in the day because he fucking takes his helmet off. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking like, the same thing. If I, I thought British about fan. presenting Dread. I thought about presenting Dread, but I'm like, that doesn't fit with this category. So I picked Judge Dread from '95, and I'm just like, especially after Nigel presented The Punisher, fucking Judge Dread works perfect with that theme. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, it really it does. does. It really, really does. I love it. I love it. That's a great pick. I mean. It's not a bad film, all things considered. It's, a, it's, it's really it's not. not. It's, it's a, a it's a, it's not a bad film. It's a bad Judge Dredd film. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It's a piece of nineties action movie. It's a decent Stallone flick. It's a bad Judge Dredd movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was British, I'd be pissed to fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I wasn't even considering dropping that movie because it was on my list. But then when Nigel presented The Punisher, I wanted to keep in theme. Mm, so I like it. I like it. This is great. This is great. All right, Tom, you got to follow that up. 
So. Oh shit. Okay, yeah, I do have to follow <laughs> it up. Hang on, I gotta. So my second one, and I'm not following a theme on any of these. Well, I'm still following a theme because this is definitely a uh, what were they thinking movie, and this was also sort of my alternate to Five Nights at Freddy's because. For all intents and purposes, it's Five Nights at Freddy's at home. I went with the 2019 film, The Banana Splits Movie. Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't that a kid for mo- a movie for kids? Uh, I mean, there are kids in this film. So 2019, Five Nights was still at the peak of its zeitgeist. But oh, it's rated R. Nice. Yes. I'm thinking of something totally different. Whole... No, yeah, no, the Banana Splits TV show, um, for those who don't know of it, because none of us here are over 40, um, was a 1960s kids series um about anthropomorphic animals that, you know, you know, they were cartoon hosts. They showed some like sea level Hanna Barbera cartoons and shield for Kellogg's breakfast cereal. They were the Wiggles, but with like dollar store Chuck E. Cheese costumes and a lot of drugs involved in the making of it. So I think it was Paramount or whomever owns the Banana Splits IP. They said, Hey, everyone loves Five Nights at Freddy's. We've got some creepy ass animatronic things. Why don't we just make our own <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's? So this got made, and yeah, it's Wish Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, um, I'm kind of curious. I'm morbidly curious now. I've got the trailer. I'm watching it like without audio. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, guys. Exactly. I think round two. Round two is a strong contender to get. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard nothing but not good things about this. It's been covered here and there by some like other YouTube movie people, but not by enough. So I think we could fill that gap if we really wanted to. 5.1 out of 10. 5.1 out of 10. It's still, still, so not the lowest film we've ever, we would have ever watched. No, no, no. I think and, it would be a great episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to watch that one just for that. Uh, yeah, I think it would be a great episode. I don't think it would be a great movie to watch. But I have an idea, guys, since we're throwing shit up there. This will be the last round in our what were they thinking category. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And then after this round, we'll just go off and we'll spout the other movies that we had in our list. Because I just want to get those name, those out there. Okay, cool. And then we'll do another three rounds with our next category, and then another, and then we'll spout whatever movies we had, and then so on and so forth. Okay. Oh, this like is it. these are the only three films I have, plus one more in case, because uh, all these films do fill all the categories. So once again, Tom didn't finish the homework. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's okay honestly tom's first two selections are pretty strong i think he, he stands by them so yeah, we, yeah, can, yeah. we can make his three movies fit and i only have a fourth i only got really got a fourth one that i wanted to present anyway so it's we're good we're good we are actually we're doing just okay fine. we are doing just fine i thought we were picking three for each category no just three total oh see i thought i thought we decided three for each category oh mm-hmm. i thought we did i thought we did three for each category or or i well Three total, I, but they had I to don't. like fill at least no. one or all three categories. No, I thought it was three for each category. Like I'm like 99% sure that was what we decided. We'd each present nine movies. Six and a half hours later. You work with me, <laughs> not <laughs> for me. Wait, I'm drunk now. Hang on. <laughs> all right. Well, okay, Tom, we- you can start getting on IMDb and coming up with different movies. We'll be here for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Josh. Uh, oh, wait. Are we, are we doing the next it's, round? It's back to you. It's back oh, to you. Yeah, back round three. Me, back to me. All right. So if we're doing one last film in the what were they thinking category, and honestly, for all the production woes that Masters of the Universe had, this one looked at the production woes that Masters of the Universe had and said, hold my beer. <laughs> we're going to do everything wrong in this, and it's not even going to remotely resemble the IP except in name only. Super Mario Brothers. And no, <laughs> no, no, not the wonderfully animated movie voiced by Chris Pratt that we just got to see a couple months ago. Absolutely not. No, I'm talking about the Super Mario Brothers 90s film 
that basically made it so that another Mario movie didn't come out until last or about three or four months ago. John Lake Wazamo and the guy from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Hoskins, John Lake Wazamo, Dennis Hopper. Uh, the movie is just a fucking train wreck. And the production woes are just, oh my God. Stop the podcast. We've picked Dan's final film. I thought he peaked with Captain America, but no, no, he was barely cusping. Super Mario Brothers. Thank you, Nigel. I was hoping one of us would pick that. God. Uh, what's your name? Mario Mario. But your first name's the same as your last name? Yeah. What's your name? Luigi Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. I still know that movie beat for fucking beat. <laughs> and also, is it like coming up on an anniversary dude it was it is 20 years between movies yeah it came out 93 may 28th 93 oh my god keep in mind that episode probably wouldn't come out if we released selection section in january episode one february episode two march episode three would be in april that's fine that's fine that's fine that's fine it would be the 31st we still would be recording technically close to it's to an anniversary but it'd be its 31st anniversary you know what we were busy during the anniversary we couldn't give the wife like a really proper 20 year anniversary so we surprised her on the 21st it's fine Uh, it's fine dennis hopper is in it (laughs) yeah he is yeah Yeah, we that's right we never did talk about connections he is that would be what he'd be a six or seven pete at that point yeah he he, 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 he famously he, I think Dennis Hopper famously said, like his son asked him one time, he's like, "Dad, why did you do that terrible Super Mario Brothers movie?" And he goes, "Because you needed shoes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a terrible, terrible film. But honestly, it's got production woes that make like Masters of the Universe look like an MCU film. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. holy shit, it's so bad that uh, Nintendo forbid any more movies based on their intellectual properties until last year's Super Mario Brothers. I'm still waiting for the sequel to that movie. And plus, it's a 1980s IP, so it would still it would actually it's a 90s movie. movie. But the, the but Mario came out in the 80s. Yeah, 84. That's true. That's true. Anyways, that's my uh, third and final what were they thinking movie. And then I've got a fourth one in the pocket that I can present here in a bit. But what, what do you got? What do you got, Josh? What do you okay, got? well, I was I was going to present G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. I Ooh, was. I love that movie. Wait, no, I don't. Oh, no. Retaliation's the better one. Yeah, oh, Retaliation's yeah, yeah, yeah. the better one. That's the one with The Rock. Yeah. But in light of you presenting a game, I'm also going to present a game. Oh, no. Dungeons and Dragons. Wait, which one? The one from 2000. Fa. Oh, God, the Yui Bull one? Yeah. No, that wasn't Yui Bull. Was it Yui Bull? Oh, no, no, no he did In the Name of the King. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like a Dungeon Dragon Tale. Dragon, Dungeon yeah. Siege. Yeah. Dolph Lundgren's in the sequel to that movie. You see? How bad off was he for money? <laughs> Jesus. Although I could be persuaded to do the one that came out this year, which is actually pretty good. I've never seen the first one, but it's a game. Keeping in light with your theme there, Nigel. It is. A game. It is. It is. It keep in line with the theme. Are we sure we can veto? I really wish we could. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. So my official second pick is yeah. GI Joe Rise of Cobra. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That has some. That's a has like Thora Birch and one of the Wayans brothers and who's, the Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. 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 And who's who's the other fellow with uh, Wayans? I'm trying to. I'm blanking on his name now. Um, it's not Josh Hartnett. Unless it is Josh Hart now. Oh no, let me. I'm, I'm Are you talking about Dungeons and Dragons or, Wy- or Rise of Cobra? I think he's talking Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons I know Dragons. one of the Wayans brothers yeah. is in that. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say because well, the reason why I was asking is because one of the Wayans brothers is in Rise of Cobra too. He is. I think yeah. the same Mar- Wayans Mar- is Mar- Mar- Marlon Wayans. Mar- Mar- yes, Wayans that's is right. In Rise of Cobra. He's in both. Wow, good job, Josh. Uh, so, but no, you you added that. That's your number three. So. Yeah, I'm going to go Dungeons and Dragons. That's my uh, bad game movies. <laughs> really hoping you don't pick that one as your final. Oh, boy. Well. Did you, do you have a uh, audible to call in on for your third one, Tom? Nope. Um, I really don't, but that's fine. Real quick. Honestly, your Five Nights at Freddy's would fit perfect in this one. Oh, it would. It would fit, it would fit in with the games one, yeah. 
Well, yeah, if we went with that theme, but I, as much as I love Five Nights, and as interesting as Banana Splits would be, for Masters of the Universe, I figure we need something outrageous. Oh, God, no. Truly, oh, no. oh. truly oh. outrageous. Oh. That's right, Nigel. My third pick is Jim and the Hologram. Oh, my God. Oh, I my almost God. had that on one of mine. You know, <laughs> the best part about it, too, is it also fits in with the whole, it doesn't even resemble the fucking IP it's named after. Not at all. Oh. I thought you were going to say Josie and the Pussycats. No, we've that's that's a good movie, Josh. I know, but I'm just saying that's I almost thought that's what you're gonna say. But Jim and the holograms, dude, I almost picked that movie. Josie and the Pussycats walked, so Jim and the holograms could fall down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. For those who have never heard of this film, Jen and the Jim and the Holograms was a 1980s cartoon about an all-female pop rock band. That, you know, was essentially Hannah Montana that fights crime. You had your millionaire record label producer and her three friends, and they had a super advanced AI. They did magical world transformations. Yeah. Crime with music, friendship, and Reaganomics. So, of course, for the live action film, it was just your standard Hollywood is fake. And it was a fucking, it was a movie that, like, it, it, there's no resemblance to the IP that it's based on. It's no. like, yeah, because I remember Jim and the holograms because it preceded GI Joe and transformers usually like during the, in the lineup, like normally it was like Jim and the holograms. Oh yeah. It was before. Barbies for guys. It yeah. was like, so the girls could get like an action figure too, but it was just a repackaged Barbie. Yeah. And yeah. It, well, I mean, she was in the same vein. she was He-Man marketed for girls, but the boys could enjoy it too. Like, you know, because yeah. it was still at the end of the day, she you know, she had a sword and she transformed into she and she kicked ass and Hordak was a really cool villain. So it's like, and she crossed over with He-Man enough times to keep the boys interested in both shows. But Gem and the Holograms wasn't a terrible cartoon. I don't remember like being annoyed with it when I was a kid. So no. but that movie is infuriating. But God, it's so just- bad. That was like 2017, wasn't it? Something like yeah. that. Um, it's I like, have it on my list. Yeah, it's like 2015. Yeah. It came out like, you know, like uh, there was that craze in the mid 2000s and the early 2010s with, uh, you know, movies based on toy IPs. They, like the first two Transformers had come out in that time frame and they were massive hits. And you can say what you want about the quality of the Transformers films. They at least resemble the IP. Yeah. yeah. Same with the G.I. Joe movie. Like Rise of Cobra isn't a great film but you can see the G.I. Joe in it. But Jim and the Holograms is like nothing. Like, girls deserve better. Like that's just a ruination of their IP. I we, I like this movie, Tom. This is this is this would be a great episode. And on top of that, it also kind of bleeds into the bad movies. Because one of my gripes about one of this list that we were picking is the Destination film isn't a video game, but it kind of like the first two are video games and the last two are TV IPs. Honestly, if, if I was to pick the journey, like if I was to pick a list of journey, I would swap the banana splits with Jim and the holograms for round two and have the, the, the whole journey would be movies that don't yeah. either don't resemble the IP or struggle to resemble the IP Yeah, because yeah. The, pun- the Punisher doesn't really resemble the IP. Judge dread looks like the IP, but the internal, the meat of it. Yeah, that's there. right. Jim and the holograms would fit better on that round or on yeah. our second list. And just like Saturday morning cartoons in the 1980s, Jim and the holograms bleeds into He-Man, which bears no resemblance to the IP <laughs> that it's based on. So if I was to pick the journey, like if I had a say in this, I would go Punisher, Judge Dredd, Jim and the holograms, Masters of the Universe. Like I think that that theme fits. Yeah, and honestly, I picked the other two because I needed to fill, but I've had this in mind as soon as we said Masters of the Universe. And also, mm-hmm. no one has talked about this film. I Dude, I, I looked at, I was looking at it because I was pulling up all these lists based off of 80s or TV shows, and I'm like, Gem and the Holograms. Oh yeah, that movie exists. I had forgotten about that since 2015. Yeah, so did everyone else. Yeah. yeah. People have done retrospectives about the sp- speed racer movie b- before they've even touched on this yeah i mean dude we've had since jim and the holograms came out we've had two different no three no no only two 
because the other one came out in 2007. We've had two different Ninja Turtle IPs show up in the movie theaters. The Michael Bay version of the Ninja Turtles and then the recently rebooted Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. Transformers movies have been soft rebooted since Jim and the Holograms came Mm -hmm. out. Like, Mm -hmm. it's mind boggling how bad this movie is i want to do it yes <laughs> like, i want to do this list i want to do this list I want to do this list. see this is why i save it for my third it's like yes 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 thank you for validating i was right that yes. is a good pick that's a good one tom that's no, a good a bad one. one it's a horrible idea but we're it's a it's good fine. pick bad movie yeah and i i love the idea of doing judge dread i really do i and i i yeah, I, I, I want to do. I want to do this list. You know the nice thing I love about this new format. Yes, is I can genuinely say I th- think that's a good pick without having any spite behind it because it's not my list. <laughs> <laughs> but you ha- you have a movie on that list though. I know that's the thing. It's oh. just like, oh, Tom, that's a good list. Fuck you for having that goddamn list. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah no, oh, yeah. I don't have to compete with either of your lists either. It's like, nope, nope. This is what I bring. Here you go, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a potluck now instead of uh, we're going to my place for dinner and I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But honestly, it's going to be a terrible fucking film, but it's going to be a fantastic episode. Oh, oh yes. Are oh, right. uh, those movies, I mean, Swashbuckle. Oh, it- it's still a fucking classic and that movie was just awful you know? <laughs> of the skits <laughs> awesome all right well final quick round robin here uh what were they thinking category nigel did you have any other lists or any other movies that you kind of wanted to pick but those aren't the ones you went with no actually after gem and the holograms i got nothing my other couple movies aren't, aren't that good we can do them oh well, i'm just saying what were they tell them because i want to at least get your guys's opinions on the other okay, the rest had, of the movies in yeah. mind Okay, I had one other movie in the toys category. Um, it was the Garbage Pale Kids movie. I almost oh had that God. on my list. I almost had that as a movie. And I okay. also, I also, even though Josh just mentioned it, I also had G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra on the toys list as well. But nice. honestly, those two films, I pocket those for another time. That's just, But that's just my opinion. What about you, Josh? Did you have... Um, the only other two movies worth mentioning... Inspector Gadget 1999 and Yogi Ooh. Bear 2010. Ooh, wait, there was a Yogi Bear film? Dan Aykroyd and Justin Timberlake were Yogi and Boo Boo, respectively. Oh, what were they thinking? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for me, um, my alternate was um, the 2011 Real Steel with Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah. It, it was loose. It's essentially Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the it's Rocky's Rock'em. Rock'em it's, it's Rocky and Sock'em Robots. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, yeah, it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots with basically the plot of Rocky. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it proves that at least Hollywood can't fuck up everything. I mean... That was a solid movie. I really enjoyed that one. I've never seen it, to be honest, but it doesn't look... It doesn't look terrible. I don't remember liking it, but I do remember not hating it. Like I've seen you know. it a couple times. It's one of those movies. It's like, it's a good laundry folding film. Robots that punch until their heads pop off. Boom. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. But that's that was my backup film. I, so I, I guess I'll let you guys go forward with the rest of yours. Um, so Do you mind if we take a quick... Um, yeah, uh, I needed a refill on my beer. So let's take a quick five minute break. Okay, works for me. Welcome back to another spectacular selection episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and weekend junkie, Tom. And if you've got an itch for some cartoon flicks, then brother, we've got your fix. And thank you for fixing your browsers on us here at The Fire Pit. We might have been away for... A little longer than expected, but we're picking up our stride with our 13th selection section. And what a lucky selection section has been so far. What movies do we have left to present? Which ones will we pick? Well, you'll just have to keep things dialed in to find out. <laughs> That's how we get you. First one's free and just... (laughs) But speaking of dialing in, let's make like a cartoon and dial in to the next commercial break. 
boy, that thing they advertised for right there sure sounded awesome and or interesting. I might just have to buy or listen or support or not support whatever that was they just said. Hmm. But if you have something that you'd like people to support, or some product that you'd like to get the word out about, or if you just want to send us something just for us, because you're sweet like that, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line and why you're emailing. Whether it's to pay for some ad space, bring up a general question you'd like us to ask the fans on your behalf, let us know how you really feel about us coming back, and slingshot it our way. From there, we'll read it, start to write a pithy yet sincere response, go on an unexpected two-year hiatus and forget about it completely, and never respond. It's just like riding a bicycle. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Well, I have about two years worth of emails that I need to not respond to, so I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, Good luck! It, I, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. The movie I'm picking is Barbie. I figured. Alright, come back. Okay, don't tell Dan. I heard Barbie. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, so. So we're moving on to our next category, for which Tom has none. It's going to go quick this episode. Mm-hmm. But this one, we went off of IPs, which kind of we was the last one, too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're just going to have another round robin. All right. So, Nigel, lead us off. All right. Uh, IPs. IPs. Uh, I have, kind of fits in the theme of uh, IPs and video games, the uh, Assassin's Creed film. Mm, interesting. The movie was terrible, but that's an interesting pick. Yeah. Never seen. I honestly forgot it had been made into a film until you mentioned it, Nigel. Yeah, Dude, people do. forgot it was a film when they were watching it. Right, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. When did that film come out? Fuck, when was that? 15? 14? Something like that. Let me look it up. I remember there was the Prince of Persia 16. one that had, um, oh, 2016. Yeah, Jake John Hall mm-hmm. and Prince of Persia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in my mind, I'm seeing, you know, I'm getting the two of them like, confused so which goes to show how much of an impact assassin's creed had on the zeitgeist oh yeah Yeah. it was it didn't the movie was so so boring so not even like bad in a fun way just Mm, it's like bad in uh ridley scott's robin hood oh fuck yeah and like (laughs) say what you want about robin hood prince of thieves but at least something happens in that film (laughs) Like, like things are going on also, like Ridley Scott's Robin, it's just such a boring movie. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt about Assassin's Creed. Who made Assassin's Creed? You've, you've got the... Uh... Michael Fassbender was in it. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's good. Yeah, well, you know, man's got to eat. Justin Kurzel directed it? I'm shrugging my shoulders. That's... Mm. Yeah. He directed Macbeth and Assassin's Creed. Yeah, nothing besides... Assassin's Creed's the only one I can see, mm. which makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So for my first movie in the IP category, mm-hmm. this is a movie I am genuinely wanting to watch again. I have fond memories of it. Mm-hmm. 1980s Popeye. Josh. <laughs> Josh. I thought we were friends, Josh. You know, I've never seen. That's the Robin Williams one. Isn't That's it? the Robin. That was his uh, first movie. It nearly was his last movie, too. (laughs) I thought that was well-received. No, it tanked hard. Did it? 5.3, yeah. It has kind of a cult following on it, though, now. It really does. I wouldn't say it's fondly remembered, but it definitely has a cult following on it. So does um, Flash Gordon. 
Oh, so keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Well, well. I mean, it would be an interesting one to watch for sure. I mean, we be our first Robin Williams film, definitely. And um, I Does know that make him a one Pete. That would make him a, a one Pete. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do we call it if he's on the podcast twice, Tom? A fuck you, Josh. That's what we <laughs> call it. <laughs> I'm not saying the thing. Say the thing. I'm say not the saying. Thing. The, I'm say, not say saying. The I'm not say, saying. Say no, say, I am. Say the no, thing. no, no, no. Oh, it's, it's been two years since we recorded this podcast. I'm a new Tom, respectable Tom. I am not saying to Pete. Thank you. <laughs> Yay, he said the thing. He said the thing. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but yes, that's my my pick. And my pick. I decided to go with a new film. Um, you may have heard of it. Um, little known video game. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, Dan, so your next one. <laughs> okay, I've only got a couple movies left. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, in the uh, IP category, uh, also falls in the toys category. Uh, I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. It's uh, Ooh, that's a good it's, one. It's actually the second Michael Bay. Well, he didn't direct them. Michael Bay produced the movie. Yeah, Someone he was else a producer. Directed, but um, they're the Bay versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the first movie was not great, but the second movie is also not great. But it's actually way more fun. And it's the closest we're probably ever going to get to a live action version of the cartoon that we grew up watching. The, mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the 1980s, 90s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because it's just got a party wagon and oversized nunchucks. You know, the turtles eating pizza like crazy. Technodome. Uh, Bebop yeah, the tech, yeah, the tre- yeah, Bebop and Rocksteady. The Technodrome. Krang shows up. This is like the closest we'll ever get to a live action version of the cartoon that we watched. And honestly, I remember seeing this movie in the theaters and having fun with it like i said it's not a good film it's not a good movie but i had fun with it It falls under that uh we've established like remember the difference between 21 bridges and um tango and cash the first movie in the, that show takes itself too seriously yeah. yeah the second one does not take itself seriously but it has fun while doing it and yes that's, yeah no so i've never seen any of the bay turtles so for me I'm curious about it. I mean, it had the turtles smashing Humvees with their shelves and plus Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. It also, I mean, we have seen the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Yeah. TMNT 2 was our very first episode. Yeah. And technically, this is the second film of that generation Turtles movies. Uh, Like I said, it's a stupid movie. It's not great. It's it is fun though. The first couple minutes of the movie when the oversized nunchucks come out of the party wagon, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm I'm hooked. You have that, right? that, that, that set the tone for the whole yeah. movie. Like, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. It read the assignment, yes. So yeah. I mean, if you pick this as your starter, it would be fitting for the new season to be a turtles film. So good choice, Nigel. All righty, uh, Josh. Uh, I think I'm gonna save the one that I really want for last. So my second pick is Transformers. Which, Which one? one? <laughs> I can't pick one. <laughs> I want them both. <laughs> pick the good one. Oh, well, Bumblebee. <laughs> Although well, I, 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 did just see Rise, I did just see Rise of the Beasts. Um, no, I'm like, I'm, I'm on, a, on the fence. Of the uh, not counting Bumblebee and the one that just came out. Well, that's Rise of the Beasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Transformers 07. I really enjoyed that one. Now, granted, I have a nostalgia for Transformers 1984. Like, I fucking love that movie. But That technically came out in the theaters, and it's feature length. Yes, that's why it's on my list. Oh, okay. Is that, is that, what, is that what this was? Was this just was Transformers? Like, it was both of Transformers, them. I, just, I don't know which one to pick. I can't decide between the two of them. Do I want to go with the 2007 or the 1984? And you know what? It's your list, Josh. It's your movie. You have final say. I know, and that's what I'm saying. Like I'm telling you, the, both of those movies, Transformers would, 07, Transformers. Pair, the, the, the 07 version, not a great film, but it would pair well with the list that has Jim and the Holograms in it. Because, one, it's Transformers, then Jim, and then followed by He-Man. So it sounds like a Saturday morning. Yeah, the Saturday morning power um, hour, yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, 
And honestly, if I swapped out Punisher and picked one of my G.I. Joe films, we'd have an yeah. absolute Saturday morning. Dude, cartoon. that would be almost perfect. Right. So, um, wait, let's do that. <laughs> it's just like stop mid thought. I'm like, wait, let's do a Saturday morning power hour theme. Dude, that um, would be perfect for the journey name, too. That, that would be Saturday morning power hour. That would be the name okay. of our journey so or some like, shit. Go with G.I. Joe Retaliation. I'm picking the good one. I want to watch the one with The Rock and where they actually drive the vehicles from G.I. Joe and all that shit. Like, well, you could also, there was that G.I. Joe movie, The uh, Snake Eyes. No. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> I would actually rather watch Rise of Cobra than Snake Eyes. Rise of Cobra is not great either, but at least it's like it's stupid. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And then like Retaliation is like, it has like a scene with just ninjas fighting because it's that it resembles the cartoon. Like guys, we're out of ideas. Ninjas. Yeah. Ninjas. Okay. okay. So like, we just throw some ninjas out there, mm. but then like we start with GI Joe. Then we go to one of the transformers. Josh pick one. I don't care which transformers film. They're all terrible. Um, well, Oh seven's not bad. Uh, the second one is awful. The racist Autobots are just yep. terrible. Also devastator balls. Well, um, no, I, it, 2007 is the one that's on my list. None of the other bullshit ones. Okay. Yeah. It's either 2007 or 1984. Okay. And then, uh, we got transformers and then gem and the holograms because like, say what you want about the Michael Bay transformers films. They at least resemble the transformers IP and you know, all the transformers fanboys get Peter Cullen as the voice of Optimus. And then mm. right there with uh, Gem and the Holograms is, fuck you, girls. You know, we're not making a movie that's based on anything you grew up watching. Kiss our ass. And then we watch He-Man. Dude, honestly, I love that. I love that. Like, I mean, guys, we can record this podcast. We can get some fucking Crunchberry cereal. There's some fruit and pebbles. And we can watch it in our PJs. It's fantastic. It's a goddamn journey writes itself yeah the, seriously like you could even have like the skits and everything be just like every episode oh is us God, getting ready yes. to watch the, uh, yes. our shows like we're up at five in the morning yes <laughs> yes the only time i would ever wake up at five in the morning saturday morning cartoons well i think that i don't even need to present barbie i think we have our list guys unless no, still we are present gonna... barbie still present well, barbie okay. because we have to have a commercial break <laughs> we do <laughs> we do. <laughs> Dude, honestly, Dan, I think that your idea, the Saturday morning power hour, the journey name is already there. Yeah. I personally am on board 100%. So all we need is Tom to sign off, and then I could say that we have our journey picked out. Unanimous. All right. So let's go. Okay. So journey name is now the Saturday morning power hour. I fucking love No, it. no, you need to call it the it Super forever. Saturday power hour. Or the Super Saturday morning. Super has to be in there somewhere. Okay, I got that. Or the Super Saturday Mega Power. I don't know. Just the more ridiculous, the better. Yes. The yes. Fire Pit Super Saturday Power Power Hour or something. Fire like that. Pit Super Saturday Power Hour. Yes. Do we oh. want Fire Pit in the journey name again? Because I'm okay with we it. We absolutely yeah. need to. Yeah. Yes. Branding. It's all about the branding. All yep, yep. about the branding. <laughs> oh. So, okay, so it starts with G.I. Joe, Retaliation, then it goes into Transformers. Are we doing the 2007 one? Yes, let's just okay. do the remakes. All right. The, that fits okay. better with the theme, yeah. Okay, so G.I. Joe, Retaliation, then Transformers. Just as, as long as we don't watch the one that gave me a concussion again. I don't care which Transformers film we watch. No, this is the first one. This is, in my opinion, of all the Michael Bay ones, this is the best. Mm -hmm. Confirmed. Yeah, because so then from Transformers, we go to Gem and the Holograms, and then from Gem and the Holograms, we go into He-Man, so, or Masters Dude. of the Universe, but sure. yeah, uh, man, we are, and you know what, we're going into the Christmas season, we're going to sell a lot of toys. Oh, we're going to sell all of the toys! <laughs> oh my god! You guys keep forgetting that the, the April is probably going to be when He-Man premieres. <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean, it's like we're... Yeah. we're... Guys, guys, I modified the name of the, the journey, I, I think it, it, it fits better. Mm-hmm. Mm Supers, did, did you name it? Super Saturday Super Power Hour? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's so dumb. I love it. I know. It comes it's back to being thing. awesome. It's like the American Dodgeball Association of America. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For people who call ATMs, a, uh, ATM uh, machines. ATM yeah. machines. Yes. I like it. I like it. Oh, God. God, this is brilliant. I have missed this podcast. Yes. Oh, oh my God. I have missed it. And I love the new format. I love how the new format just allowed us to each select a film. No one feels left out. 
we organically came together for a journey that just kind of in a list that just kind of like, oh my God, that's words. That works. Yeah, it, that it works. Fits. You you said that and I'm like, that's it. That's our list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you were able to even show pick a movie that you didn't even present, Dan. That's true. I did. Well, I was I had it in the pocket. I had GI Joe retaliation yeah. in the pocket. I could have swore you had G- uh, retaliation. So you want to? You know, he mentioned it. Remember, I re- I said I was instead of doing GI Joe Rise of Cobra, I was going to do Dungeons and Dragons, and he's like, oh, I had Rise of Cobra or retaliation. That was the good one. Also, GI Joe is mentioned in the new Transformers movie. It is. Is it really? Oh yeah, their Hasbro cinematic universe is going to be a thing now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, since Barbie and shit. But that's a talk for another episode. The Fire Pit Super Saturday Super Power Hour. How are we going to do our hype section, guys? Okay, 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 okay. Um, so, <sighs> fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. I think of. each of us should introduce our, our movies that we presented. So it'll go Dan, me, Tom, Dan. Or it needs to sound, we'll, or it might need to sound like a uh, you know, like the commercials back then. Like it's a Saturday morning power hour with G.I. Joe retaliation, Transformers, Gemini holograms, and Masters of the Universe. You know, it's like something like that. It's gotta be like, holy shit, like I have to watch this or my parents will die. <laughs> Join us Saturday morning at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing started at 5 a.m. What fucking time were you waking up as a kid? <laughs> Actually, I, I woke up at like early goddamn morning at five in the morning. And yeah, there Dude, was like a Jesus hour at that hour. Yeah, I remember waking up like early and seeing things like, you know, like Tom said, Jesus power hour or something like that. And then fucking uh, or or the tail end of an infomercial or something like that, you know. Yeah, it's like or you got to wait. It's like I remember waking up early to watch cartoons and. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be wait, waiting. So I play with my toys until they start coming on. Yeah, Or like sometimes in the early, early mornings is when they show the really little kids cartoons, because that's when really little kids wake up mm-hmm. or like so that's when their parents, they wake up their parents, you know, like, you know, uh, cause like I remember when Claire was little, like stuff like Mickey Mouse fun house was on at like 7am and shit. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I remember Denver, the lost dinosaur being that early too. No, wait, that oh was my God. Was, I forgot about that. I legitimately like that one but i'm so really did i i can't find it anywhere because yeah. oh boy i'm sure it holds up so well today <laughs> okay so let's let's uh take it from the top then take right, it so from the top. get out of bed <coughs> oh shit that was the wrong two <laughs> <laughs> fucking dad waking oh. up <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you might want to step for like a foot away from the a, microphone go, because your levels are water. all over the yeah, you, yeah, are, go, you are peaking hard yeah, go, go get a glass of water sir <laughs> you sell my cocaine 80s josh <laughs> okay so scene me 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 It's the Masters of the Universe Super Saturday Super Power Hour! Tune into the Fire Pit Podcast on the last Saturday of the month and join Dan, Tom, and Josh as they watch movies based on some of the greatest 80s Saturday morning cartoons ever! Yo Joe with G.I. Joe Retaliation. Yo Joe! Transform and roll out with the Transformers. Transform and roll out. Jam out with Jam and the Holograms. Then take on Skeletor with Masters of the Universe. It's Marshmallow Cereal and all your childhood memories. And it's only at the Fire Pit. Who needs school when weekends rule? It's totally radical! Cowabunga! It's not... The Ninja Turtles are not on this. Reaganomics! Who you gonna call? (laughs) (laughs) We are missing Ghostbusters, though. We should have Ghostbusters Afterlife! Fuck you, Josh! (laughs) Dan just left the chat. (laughs) (laughs) He's done. Just fucking finished. <laughs> so in two more years, we'll record the next episode. I love it. So I I, I don't think we're going to top anything 
else after that, guys. I think um, Dude, the Super Saturday Super Power Hour. Yep. Join the fire pit every Saturday at four o'clock in the morning. But it was five o'clock in the morning. We moved it up. Shut <laughs> the fuck up, you stupid kid. <laughs> wake mom and dad up. They've been partying all night. You won't wake up for school, but you'll wake the fuck up for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like one of my dad's favorite lines. Oh, what a fan. Oh, man. This selection section episode was fun to record. Yes, it was. It was. And that's tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on firepitpodcast.com. There are links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, wherever fine podcasts are sold, bartered, or traded. You can also find us on YouTube at The Fire Pit Podcast. Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? If you want to listen to our episodes with the nifty little animated GIF playing in the background, our regular episodes are or will be hopefully Tuesdays around 6-ish, maybe. First first Tuesday of the month? We don't know. A Tuesday. Yeah, will maybe. it be the first Tuesday of the month? Don't know. Will it be the last? Don't know. It might even be the third Tuesday of the month. We might. Just- it may not even be on Tuesday. We'll re-record this later. Yeah, we might just be just trolls and make it Wednesday. It's Saturday. We settled on Saturday, the last Saturday of the month. It took us a while to settle on this date, so I'm going to have to remind you all a couple more times down the line. Mark it down. Thank you. Either way, please like and subscribe to us on whatever medium you choose. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. Also, be sure to leave us a review. Whether you like us, you love us, you're indifferent, just leave us a review. It really helps the podcast grow. We're going to try to grow this back up again. Thank you. And be sure to join us on our Discord channel. The link can be found in the episode's description, discord.me slash firepit. There, you'll get notifications of new episodes. And even better, engage in discussion with other fans of the show. So hop on in. It may be a fun time. Asterix, we can't promise that legally. (laughs) But hopefully you do it, but, you know. We don't do a lot of chatting. Thank you, Josh. (laughs) But yeah, we used to be on there a lot. Well, in our defense, we haven't recorded a lot, so. We haven't. We really haven't. So hopefully we'll be more active. But last but not least, you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. If you want to send us an email or whatever, we don't care. Um, I care. But you can also look us up on Facebook or follow us on, can I dead name Twitter and call it Twitter? Because, you know, that's like the dumbest thing. Yeah, everyone's still calling it Twitter. No one's going to call it X. We have a Twitter at FirePitCCE. Whether or not we're going to update that in the near or long future, we don't know, but we have it. So it's linked in the episode's description. Well done, Josh. Like we've never left. It has. It's, it's honestly... I haven't laughed this hard in a while. Like that, that was just fantastic. The whole way we came up with the journey and yes, our super new f- new friend. So, <laughs> yes. So do you have any uh, shout outs, any life updates there, Josh? Oh, always Tarek Thorne. Yes. Like definitely going to shout out Tarek Thorne. That guy is our like number one fan, like easily. Honestly, I felt bad when I released those last couple episodes because I didn't shout him out. Like, seriously, give me two seconds. I got to log into our Podbean because this guy, this guy, like, like, seriously, he's the only person who ever comments on Podbean. Here, I got I to read this one that he posted. He, he posted in July on our uh, The Flash episode. Doesn't anyone else understand the greatness of this podcast? Come join us around the fire pit. <laughs> We're not paying this guy either. They, no, they're doing no. this for free. And it's okay. like, seriously, he, another one he did six months ago when we released Cocaine Bear. Best podcast ever. That was back in March. <laughs> nice. And, like, seriously, all of our comments is this guy. I love you, Tyrick Thorne. You are easily our biggest fan. So this is my like epic shout out to you because we haven't had a chance to shout you out in like a while. So thank you. You're the type of fan that we want. So thank you. Yeah. Seriously. Good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Oh, nice know, guy. Tear this one. Yeah. 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 Not that, 
Anyone from you? Your side? Oh, well, of course, I'm going to shout out Peggy, the old school friend of the channel. Uh, also still very supportive of the podcast. Was actually super excited for me today when I told her that we were going to be recording a new selection section episode. Like, she was all, like, very supportive, happy that we're getting back on the horse. And I think she's going to be very pleased when we announce the journey. Because she's from the same generation that remembers Saturday morning cartoons. So she's going to be very happy with this. And uh, obviously a big shout out to uh, Rob. Uh, we haven't talked to him in a while, but he's still a very loyal supporter of the channel, still active in the discord and gets very excited for the episodes. And I think Rob is going to be absolutely thrilled with this journey as well. So yeah, that's who I'm going to shout out. And from my side, I've been um, on the Twitter. I'm, I'm also with Josh. I'm not going to call it x because x is not going to give it to me but i want to shout out osw reviews for one watching a movie that us three here have well in our heart a hard ticket to hawaii <laughs> they watched it they watched it and they well as much as you can love a film like that but yes so i i shouted out to them on our on behalf of our podcast and you know they gave us you know Thanks and such. So I wanted to just shout them out. And everyone else has been coming in. You've been recommending it to friends, not just on Twitter, but on Podbean and everywhere else. Just thanks for popping in. And we look forward to giving you some new stuff here going forward. Oh, dude, honestly, I'm loving this journey. I'm loving this new format. I think season three is going to be amazeballs. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're going to have our uh, next generation moment where uh, can we finally get the good looking uniforms and they sp make the bridge all nice and shiny and it ends with Mr. Wharf fire. So, yeah, yeah we are definitely growing the beard because we're we're older, wiser, and we're still grumpy assholes. But. So uh, what's uh, w w what's the first show that's that's on when we're when we're uh, tuning in on Saturday morning there, Dan? The what now? The fire pit. We, <laughs> come on, Dan. We're totally setting you up and you're failing. This is why we don't go off script. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Oh. I'm so <laughs> much editing. You're gonna have fun. Now for a new episode of G.I. Joe Retaliation. There we go. Now drag your parents to the store so you can buy the toys while you watch the show. All the toys. Battery's not included. Until then, That's I've... what I do? <laughs> you ruined it! Well, I've been Josh. Oh, shit, is it me? <laughs> I've been Tom! <laughs> <laughs> Professional podcasters! <clears throat> I've been Josh... I've been Tom. I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs>